Hello there, everyone. We got a nice little episode of optimal lineups and stacks for week seven on FanDuel. Uh, Jason, you want to save me from this intro I'm doing right now? I got to bail you out way too often with these. You get way too ahead of yourself. You don't know what character you're <laughs> going to go with. I mean, you got to devote to it if you're going to do it. Uh, other than the HD TV, uh, if you haven't checked out our quarterback one, uh, for for FanDuel, you know, or DK, that was getting quite a bit of buzz. Uh, so definitely head over there to our YouTube channel. But uh, anyhow, cash game and GPPs. Uh, we're taking a look at our lineup optimizer and what it's spitting out for this week. Um, I will read the lineup and then we can sort of do a little, a little, uh, a little thang, a little thang, a roo. Um, Blake Bortles. Spencer Ware, Devonta Freeman, A.J. Green, Brandon Marshall, Mike Evans, Jack Doyle, Josh Lambeau, and Minnesota Vikings. This is a cash game lineup. Uh, are there weaknesses in this lineup? Is this a strong lineup? Do you like this construction? What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's great construction. I mean, you know, I'll start it off with with the um, tight end and kicker and defense first because I feel like that really sets up everything else in the lineup. Uh, but Jack Doyle, it's punting with um, in, in all three lineups, which I like. Um, obviously, 4,700, that's going to give you a couple extra, you know, uh, about 1,500, depending on who else you're going to look at at tight end to kind of spend freely elsewhere. Uh, obviously, Minnesota's not that expensive. Josh Lambeau, a, a kicker you can use this week against Atlanta. I'm fine with that. Um, but we get into kind of the core here, and, and Mike Evans, Brandon Marshall, AJ Green. I mean, that's a hell of a wide receiver trio there this week. All in plus matchups for me. Um, AJ Green is, is a guy who I'm going to be keen in on a lot. But then you don't really sacrifice anywhere else. I mean, you're looking at Spencer Ware in a good spot against New Orleans at 7K. I think that's a really nice price for him and a, and a really great matchup. Devonta Freeman, 7,500. Once again, I mean, uh, you look at New Orleans and, and San Diego. They're inside the bottom three and FanDuel points allowed to running backs. So it, it's really keying in on the matchup. Both those teams with really high totals this week. Both of them are favorites. So wearing Freeman in really good spots. Bortles I get a little bit lost with. Um, he's not the most consistent option. It's a great matchup. I see what we're doing here. I like him in the GPP lineup below. I, I'd rather just use Cousins for 100 less against Detroit, even though Cousins is on the road. So I think that would be the only real pivot that I'd make. But other than that, you, you throw Cousins in here, and, and I think this is a really great cash game lineup. Yeah, I tend to agree. Uh, you know, you mentioned the bottom construction. I think you can still fool around with Adam Vinatieri. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, as far as the running backs and wide receivers go, I think this is tremendous. You know, I don't necessarily like playing Blake Bortles without Allen Robinson. Um, especially with the, the rumors that Alan Hearns might be out, um, you know, mispractice. So if that's the case, I think you really want to get Alan Robinson in there somewhere. But as far as just the player per player goes, I think that's a really, really safe, safe lineup for sure. Yeah, I definitely do too. And, and we look at the GPP projected lineup. Um, so it moves off, you know, Freeman for, for Tevin Coleman, which is obviously a swerve that, that you can make. I think it's viable with Coleman's touchdown upside. Um, you expect his usage to be relatively the same. I'm looking at this total. I'm looking at this game and I'm just like, man, I, I really do feel like there's four pieces that could equally pay off their price tags. And, and Coleman's one of them. Absolutely. Uh, and again, you know, I guess we can throw out this lineup. It's essentially pretty similar. You know, the running backs are Murray and Tevin Coleman, Brandon cooks, and then Marshall Evans, Jack Doyle, um Vinatieri Vikings what are you doing with defense here are, are you cool with just slotting in the Vikings to every lineup and just kind of logging out I am yeah I mean they're the most consistent the they got the highest upside at this point in the season that we've really seen outside of the big Chiefs game but um yeah I mean under 5k I mean you look at last year I mean defense is a, a team like Minnesota and what they're doing this year was about 5400 5500 things have kind of disappeared in terms of that pricing so pay up for defense. I, I don't think there's a reason to really punt it anymore. I don't either. I think you just throw them in there. That's pretty easy. Um, yeah. As far as, you know, Brandon Cooks against the Chiefs, you kind of worry about some of their corners, but overall, um, do you like Cooks in this matchup? 
I do in a contrarian sense. I, I think, you know, obviously we'll talk about recency bias with guys who go off for big games like that, but I don't think this is going to be one where people go and chase it. Um, in 7,700, his prices come up a little bit more in, in a worse or matchup than last week. So that's a little bit um, of a downside to him, but I like the fact that, you know, Coleman moved down from Freeman opens up a space for DeMarco Murray, who's in a great spot. I like Brandon Cooks in the GPP. Obviously, Evans and Marshall, who were in the first two, are fine. And then, obviously, it bumped up Finitary, who's you know has been a strong option all year. But Cooks, I, I think there is still big play potential. You look at Marcus Peters, who, who he should draw a fair amount of, obviously a top corner for them. But if they can move him around and do some things with them, there is big play upside. I mean, we've seen Peters go after a, a ball or two and, and get beat deep. I mean, uh, Cooks obviously has that speed to really break out and go 80-plus yards against anyone. Definitely. Um, so optimal lineup with a stack, uh, Matt Ryan, Julio, and Devonta. I, I love that pairing. I love this Atlanta Falcons team this week. Um, there's just so many versatile pieces in that offense. Freeman and Julio, you know, I think have huge upside. I think you can play either running back with Matt Ryan and feel really comfortable about potentially getting points together. Uh, both in the receiving game, you know, at the goal line, you're really like upping your floor quite a bit by owning the running back with Ryan. So I don't think that takes away from anything this week. Um, I, I love that group. Yeah, there's very few times that we actually see a quarterback running back wide receiver stack, but Falcons this week are in a good spot to really make that happen. Um, and, and we're sticking with a pretty similar core here. Obviously, Freeman's been worked in quite a bit. Spencer Ware, 7 ks been worked in. We've seen Brandon Marshall, Jack Doyle. The Jack Doyle is going to be pretty much a staple for a lot of the optimized lineups this week because it opens up so much. Um, obviously, you mentioned Hearns. He was a possible guy to sit out this week. Um, you know, Didn't practice today or was limited. He pops in at 6K. Um, so curious to keep an eye on him as that third wide out um, mm-hmm. in terms of a pivot away I mean Pierre Garçon's 100 more so if you could lot, drop down uh, Nugent to a $4,500 kicker you can open up and give Garçon a look in that wide receiver three spot um, and use him but overall I, I think this is another safe lineup obviously Atlanta has the highest team total you're looking at a pretty high upside um, stack here and I just like the core this week I think it's on all the right guys Certainly agree. I really like the construction this week. I, I think this is where I'm headed, you know, especially with how the running backs are working out. I, I really like that move. Um, there are some punt running backs opening up, kind of, you know, Gillisley for the Bills um, is certainly someone to think about. If that happens, I mean, obviously you can bump up Jack Doyle to one of those high end tight ends, but overall, yeah, this is kind of what I'm liking as well. Um, is there anything else you're really looking at here before we kind of jump out here? I don't think so. I mean, I, I think you look, obviously, if a punt running back opens up, uh, you, you can bump up another guy to a big kind of high tier like a DeMarco Murray or move up to an A.J. Green from a Brandon Marshall. So that, w- that would kind of work up the exposure there. Makes sense. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, As always, if you like what we're doing here, check out our YouTube channel. Give us a like and subscribe. Uh, If you want to check out this article, head over to dailyfantasycafe.com and read that there. Um, My stuff is all there as well for the whole week. You know, we got all our podcasts rolling there as well. Um, So hopefully you guys check that out. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week.